Hello and welcome to another video. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you for that. This time I'm going to be looking at ICT. So it's not computer science. I'm looking at ICT. I'm looking at Edexcel IGCSE 9 to 1 ICT. And already there's been a paper out on the 13th of May 2019. So we've got the first paper here and we're going to have a look at that today and have a look at at least question one of it and I'm going to unpack some more of it in other videos. So I've turned the page and I'm now looking at the case study. This is really standard at Excel stuff. What you get for each each of these exams is a case study like that. And in I've been teaching at Excel GCSE for quite some time, a few years now, and every time there's been a case study at the start and you get a picture of someone and they've usually got a name and based on that you're asked to answer some questions. In previous years, people have gone to look at these, these pictures. They've, they've made a note, a mental note of them in exams and gone to find out who they are and gone to look, at them up, look them up on, on Google. Um, I think because of that, Pearson have changed that, so it's now Pearson Asset Library. But you can expect to have a, a picture at the start, start of question one and some questions based on that. So I'm just going to move that down. So the question says, key key buys a smartphone. A smart, question 1A, the smartphone uses a sensor that detects the movement of the device. One way in which the smartphone uses data from the sensor is to switch itself off if it is dropped. There are two other ways in which a smartphone could use data from the sensor. So what we're looking at here is your smartphone and sensors that you've got in there. And you can have a load of different answers here. You've got rotating the screen so you can rotate the screen to change the view you can have music player compass data from gps perhaps new sat nav and there's loads more you could write there you can you've got image st stabilization crash sensors, step counter for your health apps. Any one of those can get you two marks, two relatively easy marks. So just move this up like that. Smartphones can be connected using wired or wireless methods. The two advantages of Kiki of using a wired method to connect the smartphone. Now, when we think about wired methods, we think about it's more reliable and it will be faster because there'll be nothing to block the signals. It'll be faster, so you're not getting blockages due to walls or doors or central heating systems or aircon systems, or radio signals that are blocking or, or decreasing the strength of the signal. So using a wire method, you, you avoid all that. So you've got a more stable connection. And what I'd also write there is less interference from outside signals e.g. radio obstructions walls etc it's less interference so you get a stronger a stronger signal so b2 this is under the opposite you get two advantages to kiki of using a wireless method so wireless is a really good thing lots of people use it you probably use it it's good because you can easily move around you're not tied down to a specific area where you have to be because your connection is wired so you can easily move around also cost cost of cables cables are expensive so the cost of cables cabling creating a wired connection can be quite expensive. You've also got health and safety issues, just people tripping up on wires. There's also a third option with this, um, which isn't part of this question, but can be considered, might be part of other subsequent questions, is you can use power line, a power line network connection. That uses your power socket to create a network connection, and you just plug in an adapter at both ends and then wire it up to your device and you've got effectively a wired network connection. C for one mark, this is just where you need to select the correct, the correct answer. 
the smartphone uses a SIM card. Which one of these is the type of connectivity that smart card provides? Is it WLAN, Bluetooth, infrared or 4G? The only correct answer there is 4G. The only correct answer is 4G. Because all the rest are not connectivity that SIM cards provide. They're provided in other ways. So the only correct answer there is 4G. This is question D. Kiki meets her friend Zara. Draw a diagram to show how Kiki's smartphone can be used to provide Zara's tablet computer with an internet connection. Label each component and the connectivity used in a diagram. So you must put three components there. You've got your mobile phone mast. That's providing your 3 or 4G connection. You've got your smartphone. You've got your tablet. And connected to that is a Bluetooth connection to provide a kind of tethering hotspot there. So for four marks, you need to provide the mobile phone. That's providing the 3 or 4G connection to the smartphone. A tablet, which wants the internet, is using the smartphone. Is using um, the smartphone's data. Using the smartphone's 3 or 4G. So connection is made via Bluetooth between the tablet and the smartphone to be able to use the smartphone's 3G, 4G internet connection. So for four marks, you need to have a diagram that shows a smartphone connected to the internet. Correct connecti connectivity identified for this, so it's either 3 or 4G. Tablet directly connected to the smartphone, so that's a direct connection there via Bluetooth. And correct connectivity identified for this for the fourth mark so I've put there Bluetooth I've made a Bluetooth connection between smartphone and the tablet so it's quite an unusual question that but that's how you gain the marks for that you must, you must label each component with the connectivity to be able to gain four marks for that one right second part of that question explain why sharing an internet connection would affect bandwidth available to Kiki's smartphone so if you've got lots of people using the bandwidth, you've shared your internet connection, you're going to be sharing your bandwidth. And you need to think of it like a road there. So if I've got a road and I've got lots of cars on there, I haven't got much bandwidth, I want to get a traffic jam. So it's only a single track. I've only got a few cars going down. Not any, no cars can come up. I'm not going to be going through very fast. If I've got a much, much bigger bandwidth, I can think of the very, very wide motorways that you can get. Several lanes there. Cars can move through that motorway very, very quickly. And lots of cars can go through at once. Because there's lots of lanes, the cars can choose the right lane for the, for, for the speed they're going at. And they can move through quite quickly. Now, if this was my bandwidth here. If I put more cars on there, so I put lots more cars on there, I'm going to be sharing that road. So I'm going to be sharing, the analogy is, I'm going to be sharing my bandwidth. And what's going to happen is, that's going to slow everything right down. So the answer to that is, Kiki will have less bandwidth. So she's going to be sharing it, she's going to have less bandwidth because she's going to be sharing it, she's going to be adding more connections there. So think about the road, I'm going to be sharing the road with lots more cars. If I have, I'll have more cars to go on there. I'm going to be sharing the road with lots more cars. So her bandwidth is fixed, it's only a certain size. And then it must be, must be divided between each person. So I'm going to be sharing the bandwidth when we're dividing it between each person, it is only so big. So just like my road, my road is only so many so many lanes wide. If I have more cars to it, it's going to slow things up because I haven't got any more lanes for them to go on. Similarly, my bandwidth is only so much, and if I share it, I'm going to have less of it for myself. Question E: Kiki's smartphone and Zara's tablet share a lot of the same functionality. State the term used to describe that something called convergence. It's where devices 
share the same functionality. So, for example, my smartphone can be a camera, it can be a sat nav, so I don't need to have a sat separate sat nav now. I can use my smartphone. If I'm out and about, I want to take a picture, I don't need to have a camera, a digital camera. I can use my smartphone. That is an example of convergence where lots of technologies merge in, into one and I can use them with one device. Question F. The smartphone has a 4 GHz CPU. Describe the function of a CPU. CPU is like the brain of the computer and what it's doing is it's fetching, then decoding and executing instructions. So it's fetching an instruction, decoding it, and executing it. And the instructions could be anything that you could think to do to do with your smartphone. So open an application, run something. Those are the instructions. G, the smartphone uses application software. Describe the purpose of the application software. Well, app or application software is software that is designed so that the user can perform a task e.g. if you want the example write a document write a letter anything you think to do with an app H explain one benefit of using solid state storage with a smartphone Smartphones contain solid state storage, it's why they can be so thin. If it had magnetic storage, it would be a lot bigger than what it is. So we can get that very small chassis because of solid state storage. Now, what are the benefits of that solid state storage? So it's using a hard drive with no moving parts. And the benefits are, well, less prone to damage which with a smartphone is very important they get bashed about quite a lot uh, no moving parts it's kind of part of the first one there one mark for that takes up less space which is the whole point of the smartphone is that they're not big they can fit in your pocket they're portable and um, potentially as well that would be two marks, but potentially longer battery life. They don't have any moving parts. Moving parts would use battery life. So having no moving parts means less friction and it means a longer battery life. Right, this is question I. Kiki's smartphone uses an open source operating system. Which of these describes the source code in an open source operating system? Now, open source means that you can download the software freely and you can edit the code. So the only correct answer is here is that it's made available to users. It's not owned by a company, but unlike proprietary software, which is the opposite end, the company don't um, specifically say, say you cannot edit the code, you cannot do certain things with it. They make it freely available, it's usually free to download, and they say you can do pretty much what you want with it. Um, definitely isn't, isn't more secure, probably less secure in some ways, and it definitely won't lose, use less processing power. There's absolutely, absolutely nothing to do with processing power. Now, that concludes a very large question one, and its total is 21 marks. Now, if you think that the total mark for this, this paper, paper one, is 100, then you've got a, a, good, a good fifth, moving on to almost a quarter of your marks with just question one. It does go on quite a lot, but just, just thinking about it carefully, providing the correct responses to multiple choice, and describing your answers fully, gives you... 21 marks there. There were no questions there that asked me to describe or explain things in any particularly great detail. I don't think that's a particularly difficult question and I think everyone should be able to get the full marks for that question. 
So thank you for watching this rather long video, but there's quite a lot to that, and I hope that's been really helpful. Please let me know in the comments below.